Okay, today I'm going to be converting a saline lock to an IV bag. Um, so the first thing that I will want to do is verify my doctor's orders. Um, I will come into the patient room, verify that I have the correct patient by um, having them confirm their name and date of birth for me. I will explain the procedure that I'm going to be doing to the patient. Uh, at this point, I will have already collected all of my materials. I will have verified that I have the correct medication, which in this case is normal saline. Um, I want to verify that um, the expiration is current, that there's no um, sedimentation in the solution and that the clarity is, is there. Um, and then I've also um, checked it to the doctor's orders, so that is good. Um, I will come in, introduce myself to the patient, explain my procedure. Um, I will tell the patient my name um, and then just go ahead and provide for patient privacy um, during this whole time. And if I had a real patient, I'd raise the bed up to my working level. Um, so that I'm, I'm maintaining my proper posture as well. First thing I'm going to want to do is just do kind of a visual assessment of the IV insertion site. This is in a saline lock. Um, I want to make sure that there is no redness, swelling, or um, signs of infiltration, that the patient isn't currently experiencing any pain. Everything looks good. So I'll begin by um, cleansing my saline lock port. I want to give this about 15 seconds for the alcohol to dry, otherwise it will burn when it goes in. We'll aseptically connect um, saline, this is just a saline flush, and I'm going to slowly administer about 3 cc's, and again I'm just looking for signs of infiltration, redness, and also uh, any difficulty with um, the administration of those 3 cc's. I'm going to lock my saline lock and I'm going to, for the purposes of keeping it clean, just keep my um, syringe on here that has some normal saline in it. Um, I'm going to grab the appropriate um, IV tubing, um, has my drop factor on the tubing, um, and I'm going to, again, maintaining a septic technique, open my tubing, remove the packaging. to make sure that I lock my clamp, my roller clamp. And I will also have completed a sticker with the time, date, and my initials, and I'm going to put that on the tubing. This tubing needs to be changed every 72 hours in most cases, but you would follow agency protocol. And at this point, it's important to remember that if the, the tubing were to you know, touch the ground or anything in that, of that nature that it would no longer be sterile or aseptic and I would need to um, replace my tubing. So again, I've already verified my IV solution. It looks good. I will aseptically connect my spike to my IV tubing. I will invert it and hang it on the pole. I'm going to fill this chamber up about a third to half. Remove the cap on the end of my IV line. And I'm going to open the roller clamp to get a free flow through the line. This is going to ensure that there's no bubbles, air bubbles, and I want to get a nice free flow. I get that, so I lock my roller clamp. Um, I can replace the cap if I'd like. But since I just have had this in my hand, I know it's sterile. It is clean. I'm going to disconnect my flush from my saline port, and I will aseptically connect the two ports together. I will unlock there and open up my roller clamp to the prescribed flow rate. I'm going to do 100, mil, uh, 100 mLs over 60 minutes at a drop rate of 50, uh, sorry, drop factor of 15 to get 25 drops per minute. So I have set my rate. Um, 
again, just ensuring that the line is freely flowing. Um, and I just kind of want to follow it down to make sure that there's no occlusions of the line um, and monitor the patient's tolerance to the procedure. Um, when I am done with the, proce with the procedure, I will want to ensure that I document um, everything that I've done. Um, I will want to document the patient's tolerance to the procedure as well as um, any redness or any abnormal findings that I find around the IV insertion site. Um, again, I will want to verify that I did hang the right solution and I will want to double check that I do have the correct um, tag on here and that is properly signed and dated um, by myself. Um, I will make sure that the patient's bed rails are up, that the bed is down, that the coli is well within reach. Um, and at this time, I will want to assess to make sure that the patient's not experiencing any pain. Um, and I will just gather my supplies, wash my hands, throw out what I can, and leave the room. We're good. So stop recording, please.